Hi, this is Dr. Sarah Siddiqui, and I'm here for our monthly Facebook presentation. All right, great. So this month's topic, um, again, I'm Dr. Sarah Siddiqui. I would like to thank the Elwood Public Library for allowing me to um, present on different topics. So this topic is about what is in your medicine cabinet, how, um, you know, what, what should we do to kind of make sure that uh, we have everything that we may need and also how do we um, make sure that it's uh, safe and uh, protecting the kids from some of the medications in there. So um, again, I'm Dr. Sarah Siddiqui and I'm part of the NYU Langone Huntington Medical Group and uh, thank you very much. Okay, so I have no disclosures to identify. Um, this is not medical advice and not specifically um, specific in nature. So of course, if you have any concerns or questions, you wanna contact your own medical provider um, and please discuss any medications specifically prescription medications so we're talking about over-the-counter medications here but anything prescription um, you do want to discuss with your provider and also when you're on prescription medications you do want to discuss some types of medications that are even over-the-counter make sure they don't interact um, Thank you to the Elwood Public Library again. And then Eric also, um, thank you to him for editing and posting my videos. And please reach out to the reference desk. And if you have any questions regarding this video or any of my videos, and also if you have any ideas of future topics, that would be great. So thank you. So um, we're gonna just, this is gonna be um, uh, not, too long and some um, just for informational purposes, but just some guidelines, what we're gonna be talking about is just some common medications and supplies that you should have in your medicine cabinet um, or in your home and just keeping it safe. Some general recommendations for medications. Um, we're gonna talk about some specific newborn and infant supplies. If you're getting ready to um, have a baby or have a baby in your home, sometimes these types of um, products might be a good idea for you to have and then some things for older children and just some supplies that you may need for possible injuries uh, that may occur. So um, I'd like to also thank my son Adam for helping me with some of the slide um, aesthetics as he liked to call them. So thank you, Adam. Uh, so first of all, uh, safety. You really want to keep uh, everything um, locked away or in a higher shelf. You don't want small children to be able to have access to things like acetaminophen, ibuprofen. So these are fever medications. Um, you want to make sure that they're um, in a place that's stored that they can't reach um, and locked and also um, make sure that they are uh, packaged in a childproof container so that they can open it. Um, of course, you don't want to share any prescription medications and only use prescription medications as prescribed. And um, some adult medications can be very dangerous if ingested um, by smaller infants, specifically like blood thinner medications or antihypertensive medications can be quite dangerous even if one uh, pill is um, in their mouth. So definitely it's something that you want to be aware of um, and that if your child is found to have um, a bottle or a pill in their in their mouth that you identified um, there's a number there you know please call your doctor right away um, you may need to call the hospital but another number to have is poison control and um, I have the number listed here And uh, you really just want to have this number on hand for emergencies. So this is a national number. It's 1-800-222-1222. And uh, from anywhere, you can call it from anywhere. And you will be patched through to your local, if we do, if there's um, a local state uh, one, 
a poison control center, you'll be dispatched to that, the closest one. And so in New York, we do have a few poison control centers and it's manned uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, a specialist will help guide you through um, if your child did ingest something that they shouldn't have. It can go from, um, you know, some products that are in your home, medications, anything, and they kind of guide you through uh, what what you should do. Obviously call your um, healthcare provider as well. And if poison control or your healthcare provider determines that you may need some immediate medical attention, then you need to um, follow that advice and get there. Um, and then I just have one more slide about, um, this is a uh, the poison control sticker. You can pick these up pretty much anywhere. I know our office, we have them for our patients and you wanna put them like on your phones or you can even take a picture of it and put it on your cell phone so you have it. I know I've given this out, this number out whenever I speak to patients on call. Um, and uh, we even call them to find out, you know, to make sure everything's okay. So we use this resource a lot. <clears throat> um, and so general supplies, um, so basically there's different categories of medications and usually I recommend um, to have these on hand. So fever reducers, uh, things like acetaminophen and ibuprofen are very good for children. So ibuprofen should only be used for babies six months and up and Tylenol we start using or acetaminophen we start using for babies two months and up. Under that, under the age of two months for any fever, you do wanna contact your pediatrician and, and discuss it with them if they have a fever above 100.4. Um, so it's very important for babies, especially under six weeks old to contact your doctor if that does happen because there are certain things that we wanna do to try to find out why uh, the baby has a fever. But for older children, and children over a certain age, uh, over two months, uh, if they do feel warm, you can maybe you know give some um, fever reducer medication. You want to uh, make sure you know the dosing. So sometimes you do have to contact your provider to find out the specific dosing. Um, but acetaminophen and ibuprofen is something that you should have on hand. If uh, there are ways to give um, too much, so you want to follow the instructions on the box and make sure you don't exceed. Um, usually, it's uh, you know, usually it's um, four to six doses. Uh, you don't want to exceed that in 24 hours, um, and you do want to get evaluated if the fever seems to be persisting. Allergy medicine. So I always tell my patients starting. Um, you know, for six months and up, and even sometimes even younger, the child may need them, may need uh, something called diphenhydramine. The brand name is called Benadryl, but diphenhydramine and it's an easy to find generic uh, allergy med medication. And it's not just used for seasonal allergies. These, this medication can be used for any type of allergic reaction, uh, hives, rashes, um, itching. It, it helps relieve itching too. You do want to discuss specific dosing under the age of two with your doctor. Um, but above two, um, there should be some instructions on there to help guide you. And um, antibiotic ointments, so things like um, bacitracin is what I recommend to have on hand. Neosporin is one of those things that can cause actually allergic uh, reactions. So um, some, ch some children and adults react to an ingredient in neosporin um, called neomycin. So uh, bacitracin does not have that. But either way, um, just make sure you test it in a small area prior to using it. But these um, you know, ointments come in very handy for any kind of scrapes or um, <clears throat> abrasions to, um, after you clean and dry the area, just apply that and then uh, they do help. Anti-itch ointments or anti-inflammatory ointments like hydrocortisone. So hydrocortisone does come in cream or ointment and uh, the non-prescription strength is usually a 1% or a 0.05%. And these are things that is really handy to have at home if you have a mosquito bite or um, a little area of itchiness, you can um, use that in the area. Antacid medications usually, so um, I usually uh, recommend to have some Mylanta or Maalox on hand. Um, Pepto-Bismol is um, also called bismuth uh, salicylate and we're not usually recommending that for young children uh, because it does have some aspirin type 
medication in it. So aspirin is something that we do not recommend. So I'm not talking about uh, acetaminophen or ibuprofen. I'm talking specifically about aspirin or baby aspirin. And we don't recommend this in children, um, in children because it can uh, lead to something called Rye syndrome. And so um, we avoid any aspirin in younger children. Um, and so again, antacid medications, I like are Mylanta and Maalox, and there are instructions on the bottle. It kind of helps with, if you have um, indigestion type symptoms, sometimes it helps with nausea. Again, you don't want to use these medications for a long period of time. If there is something that's continuous, uh, please check in with your doctor. So this is kind of something that could help you overnight or in a, in a situation where it's like not that often, but I do want to make sure that you contact your doctor if you're using these medications over and over, you do want to um, check in. And then constipation medicine. So um, really, uh, if you um, had any experience in yourself or your children with constipation, it is quite common. It's very, um, you know, easy to not be regular. We do encourage that you have lots of fruits and vegetables in your diet, but sometimes we need um, certain stool softeners and um, there are certain ones that we do recommend in children. There's something called Miralax, which I do recommend, and that's uh, over the counter. The dosing, um, you, you should, again, you should go over it with your um, childcare provider, but it is something that is useful to have on hand. And obviously if there's any blood in the stool or if there's severe amount of belly pain, you do want to again, check in with your doctor. So, um, but these are just some general things that I have in my medicine cabinet and I thought that it would be helpful if you knew as well. So if you have a newborn expecting, which is so exciting, or, um, or if you uh, have a small child under the age of two in your home, uh, it is helpful to have some of these products um, in the winter time or even any time between October and March, the runny noses can be kind of constant. And we don't really recommend any um, cough and cold medications in this age group. So I do like to encourage parents to keep uh, saline nose drops on hand. Sometimes even in the newborn period of time, uh, when the baby is even first born, they can sound a little bit congested or nasally and it's not really a cold. It's basically um, sometimes formula or breast milk uh, from the stomach can come up up into the back of the throat, into the nose, and that can cause kind of like a um, congestion sound. And that is something that you can clear up with the saline nose drops. Of course, if you're worried, you do want to contact your doctor and make sure that you discuss it with them. A thermometer is always a good thing to have. Um, in babies, rectal temperature is the most accurate, but you don't have to do that. You can check under the arm or on the forehead. It may not be as accurate, but it does give you a general idea. If you're not sure, you can always contact your provider and we're happy to um, do a rectal temperature in our office while we evaluate the baby. So infant gas drops, this is um, something that I do recommend sometimes um, by about three to four weeks, babies generally can get a little bit gassy or fussy. Of course, it's important to speak to your doctor, but there's something called infant um, mylocon drops or infant gas drops, which is like similar to actually Mylanta. It's for babies and has the same ingredient called simethicone. It is over the counter. And we do recommend sometimes using this um, in certain instances. Uh, nail clipper and nail file, um, definitely, you know, in your medicine cabinet or in your little basket of things for the baby is helpful. And a bulb syringe, um, there's also something called nose frida, which is something that I love to recommend. Uh, it is a specific device that is um, used as a bulb syringe that's so used to extract any, um, after you use daily nose drops, you uh, sometimes can see there's some congestion or discharge in the nose, you can use it to extract. And then diaper rash creams and ointments um, are really handy. Actually, even after the um, child is a little bit bigger, you can use these creams in other areas. So vitamin A and D ointment is one of my favorites to use, even on the skin area. Um, for any like dryness or irritation, but definitely for babies in the diaper area, I like to recommend um, vitamin A and D ointment and then 
um, Bomex or Desitin, uh, which is the zinc oxide ointment as well. And I love having those on hand and I always recommend my um, patients to have those creams on hand to use at every diaper change. And then while I have diaper changing um, on my mind, I like to also recommend diaper free time, which is really handy. And this is really helpful to help with diaper rashes as well. So five minutes after you, um, like every diaper change, just leave the diaper off for a few minutes if possible. And that really helps to clear up diaper rashes as well. Uh, but this is something that's also useful to have around in your medicine. Um, for older children, so we usually do recommend some cough and cold medication, so antihistamines like Claritin, Zyrtec, um, <clears throat> the um, generic is called Loratadine or uh, Cetirizine, and in addition to Benadryl, these are also useful in cough and congestion symptoms. We're heading into the spring allergy season, so if you do have spring allergies, you want to start those medications soon. Um, other cough and cold preps like Delsim or Robitussin. I do like to recommend individual cough and cold preps. So I like to have a cough medicine and a decongestant separately. You should use the minimal amount of what you need for the symptoms that you're trying to treat. And of course, if we're using these over and over or for a couple of days in a row, it is a good idea to get checked at the office. Um, so, you know, come on in. Uh, children, again, should not take aspirin. Um, there are some nose sprays uh, that are over the counter. So there's the saline nose spray that I talked about, but Flonase or um, Fluticasone nasal spray is helpful during allergy season as well and can clear up some congestion that you may have and that is found over the counter as well. Um, you can also speak to your provider regarding that medication too. Um, and then the constipation medications and stool softeners are also helpful for the older children in case they do have some um, irregularities in their bowel movements. Of course, if there's any blood in the stool or they're having a lot of pain, then you do wanna contact your provider. Um, and then also if they're on baseline prescription medications, you do wanna check with check in, um, for example, certain ADHD medications, um, there's some decongestants that you should not use with them. So you do wanna contact your doctor before you start any of those. And then of course, um, for injuries, you do want to have just, I have like a little, um, another box with with um, those kind of things in it. Uh, the, so you want to have gauze and alcohol wipes, bandages, ACE wraps. So an ACE wrap is very handy for those sprains and um, <clears throat> sometimes you just need something to kind of um, wrap the arm or the ankle in until you get to the doctor. And um, it's really helpful to have that. Obviously you wanna clean, if you have a wound, you wanna clean it with soap and water first and then pat it dry and then kind of dress it. Uh, you can use antibiotic ointment. Um, so burn creams, um, there's no specific, we used to prescribe silvadine for burns, but now we um, no longer do that. We usually just use um, bacitracin or there is a prescription strength bacitracin called Bactroban or Mupirosone that we may use. It is a good idea to get a burn evaluated um, so that we can kind of help you to take care of it and dress it. Obviously, if it's a large burn or a large surface area that's unfortunately been impacted, you do want to get medical care immediately and you may want to go to the hospital. Um, but these are, you know, these are other uh, things that you may want in your medicine cabinet. So we're nearing the end. I think that's all I had, but thank you so much for again, um, hanging out with me and listening. And if you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Elwood Public Library. Um, and if you have any ideas for topics, I'm always happy to, you know, I'm pretty open and just contact the library and let them know. So thank you very much and hope everybody has um, a great day, great evening and, uh, See you soon. Thank you.